Today, I'm teaching you about the book of Ecclesiastes. This is a book from which we do not often read in the Christian cycle. The Hebrew name of this book is the author's name which we use in the first line of our reading today, today Quileth. It is spelled Q O H E L E T H. It is actually a title, and it perhaps means a symbol like of a student or of listeners or collector of sayings of wisdom. The book's more common name, Ecclesiastes, is an approximate translation into Greek of this Hebrew word. The book comprises an extended reflective essay employing the autobiographical narrative, Proverbs, Parables, and Allegories. You could hear in that first reading, it wasn't a continuous story, it wasn't one thought, but a series of thoughts together. It is an almost unrelenting skepticism which characterizes the tone or the outlook. Keep that in mind as we go forward. The issues which Ecclesiastes deals with and the questions he raises are aimed at those who would claim any absolute values in this life, including possessions, fame, success, or pleasure. Wisdom itself is challenged, but folly is condemned. The refrain which begins and ends the book, Vanity of Vanities, recurs at key points throughout. The Hebrew word, today, has the sense of emptiness, futility, and absurdity. I have seen all things that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a chase after the wind. Everything in human life is subject to change, to qualification, and to loss. What profit have we from all the toil which we toil at under the sun? The answer is in the negative. No absolute profit or gain is possible. Even if some temporary profit or gain is achieved, it will ultimately be cancelled out by death, the great leveller. Wisdom has some advantage over foolishness, but even wisdom's advantage is only a temporary and qualified one. Many would locate Ecclesiastes in the 3rd century BC, when Judea was under the oppressive domination of Hellenistic kings from Egypt, that is, Greek kings from Egypt. These kings were highly efficient in their ruthless exploitation of the land and of the people. The average Jew would have felt a sense of powerlessness and an inability to change things for the better. For Quailith, God seems remote and uncommunicative, and we cannot hope to understand much less influence God's activity in the world. The book's honest and blunt appraisal of the human condition provides a healthy corrective to the occasionally excessive self-assurance of other Book of Wisdom writers. Its radical skepticism is somewhat tempered by the resigned conclusions to rejoice in whatever gifts God may give. 
keep these things in mind, especially the unrelenting skepticism, especially while reading or listening over these next days.